In the previous video, we asked ChatGPT to write Python code for defining a tidy 3D simulation, and it did a satisfactory job. If you haven't watched the video yet, please check it out on our YouTube channel. It has been two months since we created that video, and in that short amount of time, AI technology has made significant progress. Today, I will be testing whether language models can assist me in my role as a photonic design engineer. Lately, I've been focusing on developing monolithic vertical integration in photonic chips. This involves designing a coupler that can effectively transfer light from one layer to another, even if they're at different heights or made of different materials. While researching coupler designs, I came across a paper titled Low Loss, Compact, Spot Size Converter Based Vertical Couplers for Photonic Integrated Circuits. Quickly glancing through the abstract and figures, the design described in the paper looks very promising, and I plan to recreate it in an FDTD simulation to confirm its performance and potentially modify it for my own purposes. In the past, I would spend a significant amount of time thoroughly reading the paper to understand the design principles and then manually gather all the parameter values. Afterward, I could recreate the design in an FDTD simulation, verify the results, and potentially optimize the design to fit my specific requirements. However, with the remarkable abilities of large language models, I believe we can improve our work efficiency significantly. Let's see if we can replicate the design in the paper without reading into the details. Today, we will use a newly developed large language model, the Claude 2 by Anthropic, which is a direct competitor of ChatGPT and has demonstrated impressive performance and unique capabilities. Specifically, you can upload a lengthy PDF file and request Claude to extract information from it or answer any questions related to it. More importantly, it's totally free. To demonstrate this, we go to claude.ai slash chats. Click the paperclip icon to upload the PDF file of the previously mentioned paper. After it's uploaded, we ask Claude to first summarize the paper. Very quickly, Claude reads through the PDF and summarizes it beautifully into a few key points. Reading this summary gives me a much better idea about the paper. Now we are ready to delve into the details of the vertical coupler design. Taking a quick look at the schematic shown on the paper, we can see the two-tier tapered design. The top rectangular waveguide is a silicon nitride waveguide. The bottom silicon waveguide is separated into two tapers. The top taper is shorter and the bottom taper is longer. This design is very interesting and I'm wondering why it works better than a single taper. Let's ask Claude about it. Claude explains in detail the rationale behind the design and I think that makes a lot of sense. Essentially, the two-tier approach results in a smoother mode transition and gives us more design freedom. After having a much better understanding of the coupler design, we are ready to simulate it in FDTD. To do so, we need to gather all the relevant parameters. I think Claude can easily help me, so I ask Claude to retrieve all the parameters and summarize them neatly in a table. Lo and behold, it does exactly what I asked and saves me so much time already. With that, we log into tidy3d.simulation.cloud and start an empty simulation. In the parameter section, we created all the parameters given in the table. A few additional parameters are defined to help the simulation setup. Now let's assume I'm relatively new to FTTD and I'm not sure how to proceed from here. I will ask Claude to guide us through the simulation setup. Claude listed 10 steps from setting up the simulation to post-processing the results, which I think is great. Let's follow the steps and see if we can do it. First, define the simulation region and make sure it's sufficiently large. Step two, define materials. Here we define silicon dioxide, silicon, and silicon nitride. And then define geometries. We used poly slabs to define the coupler geometries quite easily. Step four is defining the FDTD mesh. I'm not sure what mesh setting is considered appropriate, so I asked Claude to further specify it. Once more, it gave me very detailed guidance. After reading it, I set the minimum steps per wavelength to 35 and visualized the grid around the tip area of the coupler. The grid looks sufficiently fine to resolve the structure well. Then we continue following Claude's guidance to set up a mode source that launches TE0 mode at the bottom silicon waveguide. Step 5 
Similarly, we define monitors. One mode monitor to measure coupling efficiency and one field monitor to visualize the field evolution. Finally, we determine the runtime required and submit the simulation to run. Three minutes later, it is complete. We then follow Claude's guidance to visualize the results. The coupling efficiency is found to be above 99% in the entire wavelength of interest, and the field distribution also confirms an adiabatic transition with minimal loss. The performance of the coupler is fantastic. With great help from AI, I was able to reference a research paper and complete the 3D FDTD simulation of a vertical coupler in just minutes. To check out the model I made with AI, please click the link in the video description. Thank you for watching.